podcast. Sean Foyt here. I'm with my good friend Daniel Hagen. We are in Australia. Actually, a couple minutes from now, I'll be going on stage and we're kicking into our second night of Let Us Worship. Uh, last night, we had thousands of pieces of amazing, amazing hunger here in Australia, and we're excited for what God's doing. Come on. Uh, but I didn't want to miss this moment, guys. I, I, I feel like this is going to be such an impactful uh, conversation with Daniel, and um, I want to get into it in a minute, but I want to first say this. During co- the COVID lockdowns, um, uh, what we experienced in America obviously was harsh, and we had never seen it before in history. Uh, But it paled in comparison to what happened in many nations around the world. Uh, One of them that I know a lot of us were appalled by was Australia. And this is actually the reason we're here. I felt like we have a mandate to bring freedom and encouragement and breakthrough and joy to nations that were locked down. I have a long history of coming and doing ministry in this nation. But Daniel was one of those bold voices that stood up. And I want you to hear his story. I want you to be inspired by how God can use one man in a crazy nation to flip the script on the enemy. So tell us who you are, how long your dreads are. Uh, <laughs> what do you progress. do? <laughs> Sean, firstly, thanks so much for being in our country, man. Yes. It was awesome. Last night was so powerful. Oh, like, man, it was man, incredible. Was the hunger in the yeah. Australian people. And what we saw last night, that's the Aussie church that I know. Yeah. The Come wild, on. free, we just don't give a rip. Right. But sadly, over the last three years, it yeah. wasn't like that. And right. I would say for the first time in my life, I want to be really honest with you, I felt ashamed of, of yeah. our nation, the way that we responded during mm-hmm. that time. And even more so the church, like there yeah. weren't too many of us that were really standing up during that time. Yeah. And, you know, I can understand in the early days, you know, two weeks to flatten the curve. A lot yeah. of us didn't know what it was, but. Two weeks turned into man, three years. <laughs> oh, you know, um, in Melbourne, Sean, we had the longest lockdowns in the world. Whoa. Longer than China. Wow. Um, and so it was, yeah, it was a really c- crazy, crazy time. And you were, you were living in Melbourne at the time. Yeah. So the heat of the, um, the worst part of the lockdowns, I was, myself and my family were personally in, in wow. Melbourne. Yeah. Wow. So to give you, like, you've probably heard some of the rumors, maybe seen some things on right. on television. None of it, uh, like, you, you couldn't over-exaggerate how crazy it was. I'll wow. give you an example. There were people being arrested for putting out their bins without a mask in their own... Wow, bins are trash cans, by yeah. the way. Yeah, <laughs> bins are yes. trash Yeah. So, you know, you've got your, your trash cans, you bring right. them out right. for the truck to come through the next right. day. and there is footage of people being arrested for not wearing a mask. Oh my gosh. Sean, one lady in a place called Ballarat in regional Victoria. Now at this stage, they only had two cases of COVID in that area of Ballarat. She worked on social media to put together a petition to try and do some type of protest in that area. So she didn't even engage in the protest, but simply by putting something on social media, the police were surveilling social media and around five or six police officers came to her house and wow. arrested her. Wow. And she was a young pregnant lady in her house simply for putting up a, a social media post. Wow. I mean, the control that the government of Australia flexed yeah. was unbelievable. I mean, how about those concentration camps and all that stuff? Was that true? Yeah, and actually it's not far from this region. So right now we're on the Sunshine Coast, which mm-hmm. is the east part of Australia. Yeah. And I actually had friends that are builders that were are contracted to actually build those uh, concentration camps. And again, they probably wouldn't term it a concentration camp, but it was like that. And literally people that had COVID were being sent to these concentration camps Wow! Um, to be locked down in these camps. It was wild. Wow. It was really, really crazy. So it's scary too how quickly yeah. Australia folded. Right. And, and then the mandating of the vax. And yes. I mean, I've met people here at the church that lost their jobs, lost mm-hmm. their homes, lost their, you know, had their cars repoed because they couldn't get a job. It yes. couldn't work. Yeah, every industry had mandated the vaccine. And a lot of our friends just didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I think the statistics were 90, 95% of Australia were forced to get vaccinated. And there's a very wow. small percentage that tried to hold the line. Wow. Um, and Sean, obviously I'm a Christian, I'm a minister. Our churches were mandated to get vaccines. So, it, so much so that we couldn't hold, well, technically, legally, 
uh, I don't know how legal it is. I think their laws were against our actual laws because I don't know how you can force someone to have a medical procedure. Right. But they were stopping um, churches or any type of public gathering. So if you didn't have a vaccine, you couldn't go to church. Yeah. And in Melbourne, um, so much so that it was a $500,000 fine for our organization if we didn't yield to their mandate laws. Wow. Um, so in some ways, I can understand why, sadly, a lot of churches folded to that. Yeah. And they literally stopped people, Christians, from coming in together. Wow. If they weren't vaccinated. So, so and, and, and what were the majority of the church leaders doing? Like, was anybody pushing back? Our, our local churches, so we're a part of Fire Church, mm -hmm. we made an early statement. We, we saw this starting to come in Europe, yeah. in France, and we saw like footage of people that were protesting outside of restaurants. I don't know if yeah. you saw that, but they yeah. were setting up like blankets and having right. picnics out the front of restaurants because they weren't allowed in restaurants. Right. So we saw this um, mandate for vaccines starting to mm -hmm. happen around other areas. So we quickly yeah. put a statement out and said, no matter what happens, no matter what they bring in here, yeah. we will never, ever turn anybody away um, based on a medical procedure. So that was always our stance with our board and with our executive right. team. But when the threat of a $500,000 fine come in, it was, it was quite a tough decision at that, right. at that same time. And it was a $13,000 fine for an individual if they disobeyed that law. Wow. That was the risk. So we made the decision to say, we don't care if it's a million dollar fine, if it's a $2 million fine, yeah. How can we, you know, how can we turn anyone away from? Yeah. This is the time when the church needs to have their doors exactly. wide open. Yeah. Um, praise God, we didn't receive any fines. Wow. Um, and, you know, we had people that were a part of Baptist churches for like 20 years, or all different churches that were coming to us crying, saying, thank you so much for opening your doors. Wow. Sadly, our family church, they wouldn't let us in. And I, I don't know too many churches that opened their doors. Um, some churches decided to have like a, a vaccinated section and an unvaccinated section. Oh my gosh. So that was kind of like their compromise to try and... Oh. So, so, so you essentially called their bluff, you know, which is kind of what we did across America. Yeah. You know, like we were like, yeah, sure. Sure we can't. Like mm -hmm. called their bluff. They didn't follow through. Did that give permission to anybody else in the country to be like, well, look, they're, they're doing it. Did, did that, did you start to see other people yeah, opening it was, up? It was an intense time. Um, I don't know of a lot of people that publicly opened up. Mm -hmm. So it kind of did feel like an un we had to be underground in some ways. Right. Um, because the, the policing was so full on. Like they had drones. They had, um, they had media campaigns to dob your neighbor in. Um, we had trolls on online that were tagging us because we didn't have masks inside the church and tagging the premier of the state and trying to dob us in. And um, it, it was a really, really crazy time. So I would say I know of friends that try to do like secret gatherings underground, mm -hmm. um, but there weren't too many people that were, were publicly standing up. And, and the, uh, the reason yeah. I ask this is because, you know, Australia has been known for... Um, call it whatever you want, but it's been a place that's curated and created movements that have touched yeah. nations of the world, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of different denominations and brands of churches that started in Australia and yeah. now they're, they're all over the world. So wow. you would think that if that was a calling that maybe something would happen here that would then spread, but you didn't really see that. No, what, what was quite interesting, though, is that after a while, there was a grassroots movement of like a, they termed it a freedom movement. Okay. And there were a lot of Christians amongst that. Right. But not too many Christian leaders were publicly presenting there, themselves right. in that. And Sean, I must say, and, and you and I have sort of talked behind the scenes a little bit about this, but what I term the seeker sensitive movement that hit the church, yeah. I believe didn't help us at all. Yeah. Because there are a lot of weak Christians at that stage that didn't right. really, you know, I, I read scriptures in Hebrews, you know, do not forsake the assembly right, of the yeah, brethren. And yeah. as pastors, we teach that because we want right. people to come to church on right. Sunday. But when it comes, comes down to it, right. we have to hold to these, right. these commands in scripture, right. Right. whether, you know, whether there's a temptation of a $500,000 fine or not, right. we've, we've got to hold to the word of God above. Well, above and, and, that, and then that's when it comes to 
the great exposing of, is your faith real? Do yeah. you mean what you're saying? Mm -hmm. It tests the strength of your theology. Yes. Um, especially if you're a church that believes in miracle signs and wonders and uh -huh. you believe in divine change. healing. Yeah, we divine this. healing. Yeah. And now people are... Psalms 91. Like, right. We're not to fear. And right. Yet, and yet we were so fearful during that time. And Do, do you feel like, you know, because this is very interesting to me. Yeah. So we saw what was happening in Australia, and and of course I, I was it, it infuriated me just because of how many times I've been here, how much I've sowed into this nation, how many great friends I have. But do you feel like people have forgotten? Is there like amnesia? Here mm -hmm. we are, like three years away from it. It's like did they forgot how crazy it was? Did they learn anything? Like that's a really good question. I would say maybe partly COVID fatigue, right? But perhaps because all of us are like we're. We've just had, had enough of it. It was a great right. time. Partly COVID shame, if, right. if we're honest about right. how we handled this. Right. Now, particularly now with all this, the reality of the statistics coming out. Um, and I also think too, like some of our uh, senators in our government right now are petitioning and they're really asking the hard questions and the honest questions about how we as a as a government handled it. Right. Um, and they, they're calling for what we term here in Australia, a Royal Commission, where it's like an independent investigation of how we handled right. uh, COVID, the lockdowns, right. the mandates, all yeah. of that. Now, and I believe in the same way, we should be as church leaders, we should be calling for an investigation. And really like we need to analyze ourselves and say, as that's an Australian good. church, yeah, that's good. did we handle this correctly? <laughs> like it's yeah. good, like the temptation is just to push it off to the side. Yeah. But um, I believe we're in the end times. And this is one of the curveballs yeah. that the enemy is throwing yeah. at us to try and stop this last great move of God's right. spirit and this great right. harvest that we're all believing for. I believe we're going to see a number of different things that will try and stop the church. Yeah. So we need to learn from it and learn what not to do and learn what to do moving forward. Well, and it seemed like that, that you know, you had this, you know, Christian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Yeah. There, people had a lot of trust, and and then it was just like he went crazy, shut down modes. I mean, the the girl, the girl in New Zealand went psycho. Yes, and people just played along to get along. Yeah, and it, it was the weirdest thing. I mm -hmm. mean, people people that were so bold and vocal about the gospel in certain areas seemed like they folded like a cheap suit. And I, I love your thoughts about. You know, because I tell people this, even people that are coming tonight, you know, we're going to have tons of people here. We're going to worship. We're going to do whatever. So it's good to take inventory on, on how you respond in the last season. Now, I say that to people, yeah. not to shame them for what they didn't do. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, we got to learn, man. Totally. Otherwise, like, because because the reality is another test is coming. Yeah. And a lot of this is these governments and this control testing how far they can go. Yes. How much will people mm -hmm. let us mess with them? You know, and I see that. Yes. And but it seems like I know in America, you know, you get dubbed a conspiracy theorist real mm -hmm. quick, although the conspiracies all turned out to be true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's the funny. conspiracy theorists. Right yeah. Now. So Profits. so so talk to me a little bit about and you came out with a song yes. calling for all these things people would say were conspiracies. Uh -huh. They got banned and censored. Yeah. Let's talk about that. And then tell me about that line as a Christian between staying joyful and hopeful, understanding the tricks of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, during that time, I wrote a song. And really, the, the motive was that partly I just wanted to document and capture what happened because a big part of what's happening now is the battle for the narrative like right. people are trying to forget or change the real truth right. of the narrative so i wanted to capture and document our experience and what actually right. happened and that's what i love about super spreader as well because it's yeah. documenting the real right. narrative right of what took place previous to that song we were releasing songs that were getting four million views for example we did a cover of jesus lover of our soul at um, upper room in dallas in america just before all the lockdowns and so we had a lot of coverage, a lot of views, but when when I released this song, um, it was it was shadow banned, it was shut down. Yeah, I had a, a Christian senator in Australia share it, which was pretty cool. Wow! Um, but that was a big part of the battle here too. Though were anything yeah. to do with COVID or um, speaking up uh, against the narrative, it was being literally being shut down 
and the government were, were funding censorship uh, on social media and partner, partnering with Facebook and all of these. Right, right, right. Um, which you guys know about as yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So, and, and then how do you, but a lot of those things you talked about even in that song, yeah. where, you know, the mandating of the Vax experimental drugs in your body that control whatever. Yes. How do you stay in that place or how did you of, hey, I'm going to call this stuff out, but I'm staying hopeful for the gospel. I'm not going to go complete in my bunker yeah. and wait out the conspiracies, but I'm going to call what I see, but yet my ultimate hope is in Jesus. Yeah, come on, man. How do you... Well, I've got to be honest, bro, watching the way you operated, um, and there weren't too many reference points for us right, here in yeah. Australia, but watching the way you operated, you spoke up, but at the same time, the tip of your spear was revival. Yeah. And it was so wow. inspiring. And often we would, we would reference you and be encouraged by what, what we were seeing. And so wow. we're, we're really grateful for that, man. I actually feel a little bit of emotional because it was crazy for us wow. here, man. And we didn't really have any reference points here. So to see you wow. flying the flag, um, yeah, it was very, wow. very encouraging. Yeah. Thank you, man. Um, yeah, sorry, I forgot the question. <laughs> No, that, no, I, 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 yeah. So how do we, how do we, um, the, the tension of like it, the world's going crazy. Right. I, I look at Isaiah, there's a scripture in Isaiah where it talks about like deep darkness right. covers the earth right. and gross darkness covers the people. And in that very same passage, like we can focus on the darkness or right. we can read the very next part of that passage where we're commanded to rise in the shine. midst of darkness, yeah. arise and shine. Right. And I think that's the tension, isn't it? It's like, we don't right. ignore the darkness. We know it's there. We're called to resist the devil, but then also submit to God right, yeah. and go after yeah. revival. And, and I believe that we're in the last days. We're in the most exciting time to be alive. Right, yeah. And Jesus said, the harvest is ripe. Yeah. The harvest is plenty. So the harvest I is mean, ripe, he's, so. he's talking about this right <laughs> now. And they literally were just down at the beach baptizing over 100 people at the beach. He just came right from there. And that's what we're going to celebrate tonight. So... I mean, it, 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 you're right. You know, we are on this season. How do you feel like the landscape has changed in the church in Australia since, yeah. since COVID? Yeah. In some ways, like I, I never want to give the enemy um, credit or anything, but I believe it's going to like what he has tried to do is going to backfire. Yeah. So I do see there's a, there's a fresh hunger in the right. people. Yeah. Um, a lot of us are like, man, we never want to take for granted these gatherings. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Um, and the time that we have, the freedom that we have yeah. right now, let's go after it with the yeah. time that we have. Um, I think everything, the Bible says, everything that can be shaken will be, will shaken. be shaken. Yeah. So I feel like there's, God's used it. He didn't cause it, but using it to purify the church, right. purify our motives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, really just get us locked in. To say, and it's like a, a line in the sand to say, yeah. come on, it's time. Yeah. It's like, are we going to play churchianity, yeah. play religion, or are right. we going to be all in and go for this? Because right. we don't have much time left. Right. And the Lord's coming back soon. I really yeah. that. We're going to go after well, it. Well, I, I, part, part of why I want you to share your stories, I feel like um, during COVID and, and, and what was exposed with these corrupt governments and the inability of the church to rise up, caused a lot of Americans to just be like, I mean, even in our own country, just be like, man, it's gone. Like Australia's gone, Canada's gone. Yeah. It, like we were just in Canada last month and uh -huh. I, like we have a mandate to go to these nations and I love these nations, right? I've come to Australia so many times with my whole family and, and we used to come twice a year almost for a decade. Um, and I couldn't come during the lockdowns because they were mandating the vax and it was insane, but it is so important for people to see that there are leaders like you yeah. and for people to not give up, for the church globally to not give up. Like yeah. God's not finished writing the story here. We're going to sing about that tonight. Come on, you know, it's a, an anthem of hope over the nation. Yeah. But at the same time, realizing that in that shaking, mm -hmm. you know, in that season of testing, God is, I feel like there's a whole new leadership structure. I feel like, and I mean, you guys have filled stadiums before yeah. in, in Australia of worshipers. Yeah. There's a lot of amazing things that have happened. Yeah. What do you see in the future for this nation that can encourage people? Yeah. Well, we call this nation has been termed the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's, that's who we are. That's our mandate. That's, that's our future. That's our, Come on. that's our hope. That's what we're believing for. 
And many, maybe some people have, have heard this, but Smith Wigglesworth yeah. came through here, did a tour right. and revival gatherings. And he prophesied over this nation that the last great move of the Holy Spirit would spring up out of Australia, New Zealand, would hit Oceania, the Pacific wow. Rim nations, and then back to Israel. Because we literally are the outermost parts of the earth here. The farthest yeah. point <laughs> from Jerusalem, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. And many of us have been, like the Bible says, wage a good warfare with prophecy. Right. So we've been leaning into that. And we believe the time's now. Yeah. Um, you know, recently the Jesus Revolution movie coming yeah. out. I think that's no coincidence. I yeah. know you guys have been going after that. Right. So God, yeah. do it again. Yeah. Like, and we're, we're on the back of that too. We're saying, Jesus, do it again, what yeah. you did in the 1970s, the days of Billy Graham, the days of right. John Wesley, the right. first great awakening, right. the second great right. awakening. Right. Do it again now. And I think we just have to have get that Aussie grit back again and say, come right. on, no matter what. We are going to charge forward. We're not going to take a, a backward step. At the very least, we'll stand. And when we've done all to stand, we'll stand. But we're not going back. Yeah, come we're on. We're not going to back down again. Come on. And I want to prophesy. And 2020 was the church that was the compliant church. Right. But I really believe that 2024, and I think a lot of us have learned from this, that 2024 is going to be the defiant church. Wow. Where we are going to move forward. We're going to resist the devil, defiant against all of the enemy's plans, we're going to march forward. And Come we're going on. to do it with purity. We're going to do it with passion, right. with holiness, yeah. and with the purity of the gospel. And, and yeah. it's all about him. Come on. And it's all about the lost. And, um, and it's just seeing the church work together. I, I, I have, and, and seeing what happened last night, to me right. was like, yeah. this is what's possible. Yeah. This yeah. is the I mean, it was like you know? raining and yeah. muddy and nasty. And people were just... Going after Jesus, there was a moment last night <clears throat> where I closed my eyes and I thought, I could be in a third world country right now. Yeah. Like, this doesn't seem like the glitz and the glam and the mm -hmm. smoke and the lights and the, yeah. what people would think of Australia. This is like the sound of the, of the nation. You know? It's like a new, Grassroots. raw, yeah. and, and I feel like that that's the great gift that we have to walk through seasons. I mean, ultimately, God didn't cause the virus and, mm -hmm. and the lockdowns and the fear and the pandemonium and the control, but he'll use that to refine us yeah. as we walk through it. And I feel like this is why I'm so excited for you guys. I feel like you've been positioned and you're not just going to be the wild, crazy conspiracy theorist guys over here, but you're going to be trusted leaders because mm -hmm. a lot of what's being birthed right now, this post COVID church, it doesn't look like the yeah. last one. Yeah, yeah. Definitely in this nation. Come on, man. And I spoke, I just want to maybe say finally too, there's probably pastors and different people watching from Australia. I love pastors. I love churches. We work with all different right. denominations. Right. And I love everybody. And I understand that everyone had a difficult time, but we do have to be honest with the way we dealt with yeah. it. It was yeah. horrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, and but I we, think there would be wholesale yeah. agreement. On yeah. A hundred percent. You know, yeah. and I think that if we don't, it's like, Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Like if we don't figure this out, come on. Yeah. Like these are the questions why I'm just wondering why most people aren't asking. Like they want to just blip, move yeah. forward to, to doing the things that they were doing before. Uh -huh. I'm like, hold on, hold just on. Hope it'll all go we've back. we've yeah. had a hiatus mm -hmm. for two years. Like, look, can we just talk about that? Come on, man. And, 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 and we do it from the posture of humility, right? Yes. We do it from the posture of repentance. And yes. If we're not willing to repent for not having a spine in a season where, the world needed us to have one. Yeah. How are we going to lead people exactly. in the days to come? Why don't we do this? Why don't you just pray for everybody yeah. before we go and pray that Aussie, that crazy Aussie dreadlock fire <laughs> from, from the Sunshine Coast. And, and let's go out of here with some yeah. hope. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing. I thank yeah. you for what's on Sean's life. Let us worship. I thank you for what he's doing with Hold the Lion. Lord Jesus, and we're just here to receive an impartation and, and a fanning into flame, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that what's happening here in Australia Come over on. these last couple of days is not just a powerful event, but is catalytic. Come on. And it is going to spread yes, right Jesus. across this nation yes, from the Lord. east to the west, yes, the north Lord. to the south, Tasmania, yes, all over this nation. Come on. The radical revival fire Come on. of Jesus <laughs> to be spread right across this region, yeah. Father. 
And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for everyone watching right now, Lord God. I just bless them and I just declare favor and blessing in Jesus' mighty name in whatever they do, Father. Every area of influence that God has given them yeah. would be impacted with the fire of God, with the gospel to see a great awakening, the last great yes. awakening before the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Love Thank you, you brother.